appreciate your holding today's uh, hearing on offshore tax evasion and closing the tax gap. Uh, I think I have some experience in this area, and I've got some experience on what I think works and what doesn't work, and that's what I'd like to discuss. But talking about the tax gap, I remember what my late friend and former Finance Committee Chairman Orrin Hatch referred to as the tax gap, and this is his quote, the great white whale of deficit reduction, end of quote. Uh, endlessly pursued, in other words, but forever eluding capture. Uh, no aspect of the tax gap has been examined more than that of offshore tax evasion. Between 2001 and 2010, Senator Baucus and I partnered together in an effort to shut down the most egregious uh, offshore tax evasion and avoidance. We enacted various pieces of legislation, held hearings, commissioned studies, and even sent the Government Accountability Office to that famous Ugland house uh, in the Cayman Islands, the notorious registered office home of thousands of offshore business entities. I'm proud of what we were able to accomplish, shutting down tax, uh, egregious tax practices, raised billions of dollars in additional revenue, but not the hundreds of billions some claimed are ripe for the picking. The reality is that there are no poles or pots of gold that can be easily harvested off of the beaches of far-flung tax havens. Even so, we owe it to the honest taxpayer. As a matter of fairness, as the chairman referred to, if for no other reason, everywhere to snuff out tax evasion where we can. Those engaged in tax evasion aren't only shortchanging the federal government, but stealing from the American taxpayers. After all, it's the law-abiding taxpayers who end up footing the bill. That's why I've long championed reasonable policies intended to discourage evasion while providing tools to the IRS to deduct tax cheats. But a key word here is reasonable. Whether it's increased financial reporting or stepped up enforcement efforts, anti-evasion measures must be balanced against taxpayers' rights and the costs such measures imposed on innocent taxpayers. When it comes to catching tax cheats, I've found targeted approaches to being far more preferable to broadly applicable ones that sweep up innocent taxpayers in far greater numbers than tax cheats. One example of an overly broad sweep approach to offshore tax evasion is the Foreign Accounts Tax Compliance Act, or FATCA. Enacted in 2010, FATCA imposed stringent requirements on foreign financial institutions to report to the U.S. Treasury on foreign assets held by their American account holders. In 2010, Democrats sold this law as a solution to wealthy tax cheats hiding assets and offshore bank accounts. Yet, according to a 2022 Treasury Inspector General report, other than assessing $14 million in penalties, the IRS hasn't been able to quantify any revenue raised under the law, and that is despite spending $574 million on implementation and enforcement campaigns. Now, at the same time, FATCA has imposed great costs on the Americans living abroad, according to the 2019 GAO report. Due to the law, many Americans living overseas have seen their bank accounts close or have been unable to open an account. 
for many foreign uh, financial institutions, the business of Americans living abroad simply isn't worth the additional burdens and cost of complying with the law. Compare this, then, with an approach that I've used, the IRS's whistleblower law I authored in 2006, which has brought in over $6 billion to the Treasury. Under this law, a single whistleblower, now just a single whistleblower, took down an offshore banking scheme that resulted in Swiss banking UBS paying $750 million in fines. In addition, thousands of illicit overseas accounts were closed and offending taxpayers prosecuted. Now, whether it's offshore banking schemes, a tangled web of shell companies, or illicit transactions by shady multinational companies, a single tax blower can bring the whole house of cards crashing down and at less cost and with fewer burdens for the innocent taxpayer. Finally, we shouldn't discount the value of good tax policy itself in shrinking evasion and avoidance. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act combined anti-base erosion and profit-shifting measures with a cut in corporate tax rates. Since its enactment, we have seen intellectual property previously held offshore for tax reasons returned to the United States. Moreover, the act of companies moving their headquarters offshore to avoid U.S. tax has ceased. Combating the tax evasion is something we have an obligation to do, but we need to be realistic about what our policies will affect and how much revenue we actually stand to gain. And enacting bad policy uh, and uh, and, and enacting bad policy that increases tax complexity and threatens the international competitiveness of U.S. companies would only make matters worse. Thank you very much.